74 years ago, the Communist Party seized control of China from the nationalist government after a bloody struggle of 29 years. The defeated nationalist government fled to Taiwan, denying communist forces of total victory over all of China. Fast forward 74 years to today. A lot has changed. China has emerged as a superpower rivaling America, and Taiwan has blossomed into a precision-focused, self-governing democracy and high-tech powerhouse with America's military backing. Now, the patience of the Chinese Communist Party is running out, as its growth and prosperity theme is fading in front of its public. The Chinese dream is turning into a nightmare as more and more of its population familiarizes itself with global liberties. The CCP had to blur football stadium footage due to the fear that its population might realize that the outside world no longer wears masks in large gatherings. Now, to keep its population united with the Chinese Communist Party, the CCP is reigniting its vow of taking Taiwan by all means necessary. China's People's Liberation Army is waging so-called Gray Zone Warfare against Taiwan. Gray Zone Warfare consists of an almost daily campaign of intimidating military exercises, patrols, and surveillance sorties over enemy territory. This was the same tactic used by Egypt when it launched an attack against Israel to take back the Suez Canal. Egypt's minister told Israel the exact date and time of the invasion, but the Israeli army did not believe it. The Egyptian army would exercise every day attacks on the Israeli position in front of the Israelis' army posts, but by nightfall their forces returned to the positions. The Israelis believed that this was just an intimidation tactic, and they wanted us to fire the first bullet so that later the Egyptians could play the victim card. But finally, one fine day, Egypt launched its planned attack, and Israeli forces were relaxing in their barracks considering the movement of Egyptian forces the routine manner. China is using the same tactics. No one knows whether the PLA bombers are on routine intimidating exercises or if today is invasion day. Xi Jinping says that China's aim is peaceful unification, but he has pointedly refused to rule out the use of force. Capturing Taiwan would give China a foothold in the so-called First Island Chain. The line, which runs through the string of islands from the Japanese archipelago to Taiwan, the Philippines, and Borneo, which enclose China's coastal seas. The stakes are high for both the Western allies on one side and the CCP on the other. If America and its allies intervened against a takeover attempt, they could inflict heavy losses on an untested Chinese military that has not fired a shot in anger for decades. Defeat could weaken the party's hold on power. For the American alliance, a Chinese takeover of Taiwan would be a devastating blow. At a stroke, the United States would lose its status as the preeminent power in Asia. In this video, we're going to discuss one scenario, how China will try to take over Taiwan and how Taipei forces will respond. We will also discuss how the US and its allies entering the war on Taiwan's side will change things for China. So here's the scenario. With tensions mounting over China's extended campaign of gray zone warfare against Taiwan and its blockade of the Matsu and Kinmen Islands, Taiwan continues to reject holding unification talks with Beijing. Public opinion remains strongly behind the Taipei government. The island boosts defense spending and expands the period of conscription. The United States steps up delivery of arms for the beleaguered island's military, F-16 fighters, long-range anti-ship missiles, tanks, smart mines, and attack helicopters. Washington also dispatches extra military advisors to assist in an urgent overhaul of Taiwan's large but poorly trained reserve forces. Alarmed at Taiwan's preparations, China's military and political leadership under President Xi Jinping decides to impose a snap customs quarantine of Taiwan in a bid to force the island's leadership to agree to unification talks. In a message to Taiwan's trading partners, Beijing reminds them that they all acknowledge the ruling Communist Party's claim to sovereignty over the self-governing island. In the same notice, Beijing informs the international community that it will enforce customs, maritime, and airspace jurisdiction over Taiwan. China also announces the creation of an Air Defense Identification Zone, or ADIZ, an area that stretches beyond a territory's airspace, where air traffic controllers request incoming flights to identify themselves. This move overrides Taiwan's existing control of its airspace. 
Beijing bans all shipping from entering what has been considered Taiwan's territorial waters without its permission. The Chinese authorities inform all airlines and shipping companies that they must have Beijing's official approval to enter or leave Taiwan's airspace or ports. They also insist that all flights, ships, and ferries submit passenger manifestos and customs declarations to Chinese authorities. Within 24 hours, a vast fleet of PLA Navy, Coast Guard, and maritime militia ships deploys around Taiwan to enforce the quarantine, intercepting ships attempting to approach the island without approval from Beijing. PLA fighters and air defense missile forces prepare to attack unauthorized aircraft entering airspace around Taiwan. Vessels heading for Taiwan are stopped and searched for weapons, military technology, or other imports that would contribute to Taiwan's defenses. Bigger cargo vessels are diverted to Chinese ports for inspection. Foreign military forces are warned they will come under attack if they attempt to approach the island. Beijing demands that the international community refrain from interfering in China's internal affairs. With the quarantine in place, and before the United States and its allies can intervene, Xi calls on the Taiwanese authorities to avert a looming global crisis and open immediate talks on unification. Taiwan's response. Taipei rejects Chinese demands for talks and deploys warships and fighters in an attempt to break the quarantine. While calling for urgent assistance from the United States and its allies, it also launches land-based missile strikes on PLA warships and aircraft around the island. Chinese forces suffer some losses, but Taiwan's efforts to keep its ports open for trade are quickly snuffed out by the PLA's superior firepower. Taiwanese naval vessels at sea are called on to surrender. Those that refuse are attacked and sunk. PLA warships and submarines lay mines in the approaches to all of Taiwan's major ports. The crucial submarine data cables carrying Taiwan's communications with the outside world are cut. Under a tight customs quarantine, Taiwan's government rejects Beijing's demand for talks on unification and calls on the United States and its allies to assist in breaking China's stranglehold. Global stock markets crash in anticipation of a wider military clash and a shortage of vital semiconductors and other key tech products from Taiwan. With Washington warning Beijing to lift its quarantine or face military intervention, China decides to impose a full blockade in a bid to increase domestic pressure on Taipei. Beijing bars all shipping from entering waters around Taiwan, apart from PLA Navy and Chinese paramilitary vessels enforcing the blockade. Oil tankers heading to the island from the Middle East are diverted to Chinese terminals. All passenger and cargo aircraft are warned they will be attacked if they intrude into the new air defense identification zone that China has imposed over Taiwan. With promises of support from the U.S. and its allies, Taiwan launches air and missile strikes on PLA warships and paramilitary vessels strangling its trade. The United States and its allies, including Japan, deploy powerful surface warships and submarines to the area around Taiwan to break the blockade. Long-range U.S. bombers are deployed to Guam and Australia to boost Allied firepower over the waters off the Chinese coast. First to arrive near Taiwan, American and Japanese submarines begin sinking PLA warships and forcing the blockade. Carrying huge payloads of long-range anti-ship missiles, American bombers also inflict massive damage on China's surface fleet. But China's powerful air defense system and anti-ship missile batteries prevent America and its allies from opening Taiwan shipping lanes and ports. Beijing also launches strikes on U.S. bases in Japan in a bid to weaken America's capacity to respond. The clashes lead to heavy losses of warships and lives. With its blockade still in place, Beijing calls for an immediate ceasefire, offers to allow urgently needed supplies to reach Taiwan, and invites negotiations with Washington in a bid to avert a full-scale war. Rather than attempt to destroy the PLA's air defense network with air and missile strikes on Chinese soil, attacks that could easily lead to all-out conflict, Washington and its allies decide to threaten an economic counterattack. They warn they will impose a counter-blockade of their own on China's seaborne imports of energy and raw materials carried out on sea lanes across the Indian Ocean and through the narrow checkpoints of the Indonesian archipelago. 
the PLA, decide to mount the biggest and most complex amphibious and airborne landing ever attempted. The PLA's goal is to overwhelm the island before the United States and its allies can respond. The PLA launches massive air, missile, and cyber attacks on key military and civilian targets all over Taiwan. At the same time, the PLA attacks U.S. bases in Japan and Guam with air and missile strikes in a bid to paralyze American forces and delay any intervention. Xi and his top commanders are convinced they're running out of time. With the world recovering from the COVID-19 pandemic that emerged in the Chinese city of Wuhan, China's global standing is worse than at any time since the Korean War. And the Chinese leadership is convinced that it has a narrow window of opportunity to unify Taiwan by force. While these strikes are underway, a huge armada of PLA amphibious ships, landing craft, and civilian ships from China's vast merchant marine fleet sets sail from China ports about 130 kilometers from Taiwan at its closest point. Aboard are hundreds of thousands of PLA troops and their heavy equipment. As the landing force approaches Taiwan, PLA transport aircraft and helicopters mount airborne landings on Taiwan to seize key targets, including airfields, ports, government buildings, and command centers. After clearing mines and obstacles from the designated landing beaches, the invasion force lands along the Taiwan coast and begins to fight its way inland. Specially trained units seize the island's key ports, repair damage from the fighting, and prepare them to receive incoming reinforcements carried on merchant vessels and civilian roll-on, roll-off ships. As the missiles and airstrikes hit Taiwan, political and military leaders are rushed to specially prepared and hardened underground command centers. Taipei calls for urgent assistance from the United States and its allies. The island's military goes into full mobilization and reserves head for their assembly points. Troops, with their armor and artillery, man the extensive defenses and fortifications around anticipated landing beaches. From concealed and hardened positions that survive the initial onslaught, Taiwan's military launches long-range missile strikes on the invasion armada and Chinese ports. From shelters deep inside mountains where they survive the initial bombardment, the island's jet fighters emerge to launch strikes on the approaching invasion force and attack PLA aircraft threatening the island. With its forces in Asia also under attack, the United States is joined by key alliance partners Japan and Australia and begins attacking the invading PLA force. American and Japanese submarines head for the Taiwan Strait to intercept troop transports and PLA warships. Extra U.S. aircraft carrier battle groups are dispatched to Asia, while U.S. bombers and stealth fighters launch missile attacks on PLA shipping and aircraft. Within hours, a major war is raging in East Asia. Like and comment below if you want us to make the next part of this video. Making videos like this is a time-consuming process, so please consider liking and sharing the video with your friends and loved ones. Thanks, and see you next time.